Welcome back to another Motobob video and now I don't normally do spy shots but imagine my surprise when I roll up to a petrol station next to this. Obviously for my job I spend a lot of time looking at pictures of motorcycles and so I knew straight away that's a Triumph Scrambler headlight, those are Triumph knee pads and that's meant to look like a Triumph engine. But it's been all beaten up and the logos have been taped over and it seems to have a lot of luggage, so it must be a test bike. And at this size of machine, the only logical conclusion is that it's the partnership between Triumph and Bajaj that was announced a couple of years back. And I've got to say, although this project clearly has a long way to go, on first impressions, I was pretty impressed. I kind of assumed that the Bajaj bikes were going to sacrifice a bit of the Triumph character, but I really did actually like the look of this. And business-wise, it's exciting for Triumph as well because bikes like this can really sell in huge volumes, be that in emerging markets where it could be viewed as essentially a big bike or here in the UK and Europe and the US where it'd be a great first step on the Triumph ladder for younger riders who still want a bit of that scrambler attitude. Now, I got a chance to have a good look at it and I got a couple of snaps. So in this video, we'll go through the seven things that I can pick out from these images. Firstly, the engine, which like I say, with the side badges, air intake covers, and the fake cooling fins has definitely been styled up to look like a Bonneville twin. It's liquid cooled though, of course, with that radiator at the front there in a vertical orientation, just like the Bonnies. Now you've just got one exhaust header coming out the side here. So this is gonna be a single cylinder bike, not a twin. As for the capacity, well, judging from the stature of the bike and the size of the engine, I reckon it's in that 350 to 500 range. Now remember that Bajaj produced some of the smaller capacity KTMs and this feels like a similar size to the 390 Adventure. Clearly they've gone for the Scrambler style but it wasn't actually that tall looking. Certainly not as tall as something like the 1200 Scramblers. I'd guess the focus will still be primarily for the road and so the seat height probably around 800 or 810 mil. Now, if you're expecting it to be super budget with really cheap equipment, then it might be a nice surprise to see some upside down forks on it. As well as the performance benefits, it does give it a slightly more premium look. And although I don't think they were adjustable from what I could see, at this sort of level, I don't think that's a feature you'd necessarily expect. At the rear, what's interesting is there's an absence of twin shocks. The whole Bonneville lineup, including the Scramblers, all use twin shocks for that proper retro look but here you'll get a monoshock. I assume there'll be at least preload adjustment to compensate for that luggage and a passenger. And yeah, visually it is a bit of a move away from the Bonnevilles, but they've probably done it to keep costs down, save a bit of weight and possibly improve performance. Now, not a very clear shot of the braking setup. It's only the back side of it, but obviously you can tell it's a single disc at the front. And from the looks of it, very much the same as the KTM 390's braking setup. That bike gets a full piston radially mounted caliper on a 320 mil disc and it's made by Bybray, which is a more affordable sub-brand of Brembo. So decent stuff, not totally budget and should be plenty of power for a smallish bike like this. Now to suit the Scrambler character, they've gone for some semi knobbly Metzler carry streets. So basically adventure tires and Metzler described them as an off-road tire with on-road performance. That's a 19 incher at the front and 17 at the rear. So the front should give it a little more off-road capability and it's cast wheels, not spoked. So maybe not true to the proper retro looking scramblers but they will be lighter probably cheaper and easier to clean it does look like there's been a lot of thought given to luggage here sure this is a test bike so it'll be carrying some recording equipment but that side rack and the rear rack both look like they're made specifically for this bike and then they almost always offer tank bags and duffel bags as accessories for their bikes so i'd be expecting a branded equivalent to everything that you see here to be available now the other scramblers in their lineup so the street scrambler and the 1200 scramblers all have high level exhaust which means that you can only run a pannier on the left side of the bike not on the side with the exhaust which is a bit of a shame if you really want to load it up and despite this bike having a low slung catalyzer the silencer still kicks up and seems to give you the same outcome unfortunately so i doubt there's space for two bags probably the most surprising thing i saw on the bike was the tft dash it looks like a big rectangular screen which isn't really in keeping with the rest of the bike or the rest of the scrambler lineup the street scrambler for example has a single round speedo and the 1200s yeah they have a tft but it's rounded as well to fit in. Perhaps this one is still in development and you can see 
see a little notch at the top right, which looks quite familiar if you've ever ridden a KTM 390 Adventure. They could just be using that dash to test this bike and then finish it off at a later date, because clearly from a styling perspective, it's quite out of keeping with the rest of the bike. But actually on the whole, I really like the look of it. It's got a baby adventure bike vibe, and I like the small headlight, the windscreen, the hand guards, and the high front mug guard. Definitely looks a lot better than I was expecting, but as always, I'd love to know what you think of it down in the comments below. And if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe and I'll catch you next time.